Someone once told me that the two most uh, intense fears that someone will face in their life is that of public speaking and that of death. So this is a story about how design helped me to confront one of them. Uh, so when I was five years old, I got stung by a bee in a sandbox, and the bee died. And uh, I've had more dramatic encounters with insects in my life, but this one was particularly memorable because it was my first experience with death, and um, I felt very guilty about it. So in order to relieve myself of the guilt I felt I had committed by being her cause of death, I, uh, I created a funeral. And so I made her a tombstone, I gathered my parents uh, in the garden for a dandelion offering ceremony, and I went on a honey strike. Um, but I was a very emotional child, so this was only the beginning of my mourning process, and I sat in the sandbox at the scene of the crime for a week, covering myself in sand, uh, trying to think, you know, what was it like to be buried, and more importantly, what was it like to be dead? Uh, those are pretty big questions for a five-year-old, uh, but that stuck with me. And so as I grew older, uh, when I was nine years old, my, pa my dad brought me to Paris uh, to visit the catacombs, which are a two-kilometer-long 19 meter deep uh, series of tunnels built from the remains of six million people. Uh, there's no lighting, no bathrooms, uh, they're not universally accessible, and they're pretty scary for a nine-year-old, but I loved every inch of them. And as, as I grew older, uh, my interest in death grew also. My favorite movies pertain to death. Um, also, if you can see here, it's uh, Interdit au moins de 16 ans. You have to be 16 to watch it. I watched it when I was four. Um, <laughs> I used to walk through cemeteries and I'd skip past the cartoons to read the obituary. But I always found, uh, I always had the urge to find a meeting ground for death and design. And so two years ago, I found the opportunity to do so. Um, and the most interesting piece of research that I found uh, during the, my beginning stages uh, took a very scientific approach. So in 1901, Dr. Duncan McDougall set out to prove that the human soul had a mass and was therefore measurable. And so he did this experiment on dying patients. Uh, he placed a scale underneath their deathbed. And at the moment that life ceased, a very interesting event occurred. Um, the weight fell with a suddenness. Um, and uh, after all the usual deductions, they discovered that there was still a three-fourths of an ounce unaccounted for. The, uh, the weight of five uh, nickels, a sack of five nickels. Uh, so uh, I had all this scientific research in hand, but I still uh, decided that I needed experience because I thought that the, uh, the main issue was the struggle that uh, society faces to collectively mourn. So I went searching for experience. I uh, discovered in the previous slide the mummified monk in Thailand um, who ate poisonous, uh, drank poisonous tea before he locked himself in a tomb so that he couldn't be eaten by baguettes because he was too toxic. Uh, I joined a death parade in the hills of Sapa in Vietnam, and I learned uh, in Australia in the outback that when someone dies in certain Aboriginal type tribes, they burn their house down and erase any photographic memory. Uh, this is a company that allows you to send your ashes to outer space, and this is a mushroom burial suit that uh, is embedded with mushroom spores that allows for a total de decomposition of the body. Um, but I decided to start designing based on one in particular, and that is Japanese cremation. Um, so in Japan, 99.6% of the population uh, decides to get cremated in accordance with Buddhist practices. Um, and this is far more than what Japan's current 5,000 crematoria can manage. Uh, there's issues in trying to expand crematoria because of high land costs and cultural taboos. Um, there's been a proposal in 2008 to develop a floating prototype that could service large coastal areas. And so for the purpose of my project, I decided to base it uh, on that prototype to give it some sort of realistic base and uh, develop a floating crematorium in Tokyo Bay. Um, in Japan, the notion of death is a processual notion where the soul must ritually separate itself from the body over the course of three days. And so this notion helped me start to design not with uh, the technical requirements of a crematorium in mind, but more so with the fundamental intent of uh, creating a space where uh, you can expose life, um, expose the transition to the afterlife. Um, so the first uh, thing was to try to give uh, the spirit a shape. So the previous slide were sketches that I got people to draw of what they thought a spirit could be like in a shape, and that became sort of uh, walls that could filter light, and then this was the model that I submerged in salt water to see how the seasonal tides could affect it. Um, and then this is sort of the graphics that came out of it. So uh, 
people would enter, they would arrive to it by boat, they would enter through an underwater tunnel, and then uh, they would pass through a large rotating door that would rotate almost unnoticeably, sort of architecturalizing um, the separation of the soul from the body. Um, and the image before was a bone picking ceremony that is tradition in Japanese uh, culture. The body's cremated at a, at a lower temperature so that people can pick the bones uh, after and keep part of them at home. Um, so this is also the remaining of the space. So there is a sort of port where you give a final goodbye. And there's also parts in Japanese cremation where you leave the urn at the crem crematorium in a temple part. So there is uh, aspects of leaving it in the building itself. And um, also because smoke was one of my main materials, I started looking into smoke uh, detoxifying technologies and smokestack designs that could actually take smoke and expel it as a shape, which allowed me to start designing with it. And so as I started forming my research and building, um, something happened. Uh, these waves tore through Japan and through my progress. And this was right at the end of my project uh, as it was coming to life. And it sort of made me realize that um, my project became very real and very vulnerable, and it was no longer uh, these images on my computer, um, and now I had to deal with something that was happening. Um, and so this made me realize that, uh, I mean, I, I felt vulnerable. I was in shock. I actually took a cue from my five-year-old self and locked myself in my room for a week and thought about what my project meant and what it meant to be mortal. And essentially what I concluded with is that I set out to... Uh, design something that I thought was in a way impossible. It can't be measured, it can't be, uh, have a cost attributed to it, um, but uh, what it helped me do is alleviate my fears of dying and essentially seek uh, death acceptance. So, thank you. <laughs>